when, when the Lubeck was settled, it was in North Lubeck, just a farm country up here, house here and there. And back at the time, and the, uh, that was all woods, forest and woods down on the point right down that there. That was all, all woods? All woods. Oh my God. In fact, up on the hill where the churches are now, that was uh, someone, there were some houses part way up, or, and there was, uh, and it was all forest, and someone was playing there, and they looked, and there was a bear <laughs> up on the hill. So that's... So this is the old town, parts uh, of... Now this was also back in... Uh, no, this was uh, a fact. There was a sardine factory right down in back here. It was the North North Lubeck Manufacturing Canning Company, gotcha. owned by Lawrence Brothers, who owned these, uh, built these two beautiful homes here. And that store, that was their store. They had uh, offices upstairs, and they had uh, a department store, and the post office was in that building. But uh, you know, this was in later years. But of course, most of their business when the early settlers came. Everything was by boat, so they went to Eastport, you know, to do their shopping and things like that. What, was it always Lubeck, or was it another? Was it part of uh, Eastport at no, one well, time? No, well, this was Eastport originally. It Lube was. Lubeck was Eastport, part of Eastport, until 1811, and then there were, uh, uh, you know, more settlers up here, and it was kind of inconvenient. Everything going by boat. You know, everyone had the boat. No roads. Just, no roads. Just pass. Just know, pass. Yeah, huh? You know, something like that. Wow. Now, uh, what wasn't Maine part of Massachusetts at one time? Yeah, the whole this whole area here included this. Is, this is North Lubeck up here, included and, and Lubeck where the village, South Lubeck and West Lubeck and out farther. It was called Plantation Eight, District of Maine, State of Massachusetts. So this was all the state of Massachusetts, too. The name, I've always thought that Lubeck was a French name. Is it a French name? No, it was name? German. It was named for L-U-B-E-C-K, Lubeck, Germany. Okay. A man named it. He'd read about Lubeck, Germany, and it was a, it was a port town on the North Sea, and, and somehow or other, it stuck, you know, kind of took his fancy, so he suggested we name it Lubeck. Interesting. So it did have a L-U-B-E-C, a K on the end of it originally, but that was so it's a German name for Little Bank Germany. Now what did your husband do? What was he, oh, what did he, he do out he, here? He did most anything he could. Yes. But mostly uh, people either worked in the factories and he did all John Carpenter works and he worked. Now winters when he was younger, he'd worked uh, in the lumber camps, cutting pulp in the, in the lumber camps for many winters. And the sardine factories were very big back then, right? Uh, yeah, but yeah. then, at that time, the sardine factories, it was seasonal work. The law uh, claimed, said that you could only have the sardine factories from April the 15th until the last day of November. So there was no work in the sardine factories in the winter. So then, men, well, like Mac and different ones, they'd either work in lumber camps or... or and then there was a, in the winter, there was a smoked herring industry. And a lot of people would work in smoked herring. You could do that in the winter. What happened to the sardine factories? How come they, they don't have them anymore? Well, I guess times changed. People grew up. Of course, then that was the only thing to do around here. And there was no transportation. Were um, they canned? Huh? Were the sardines canned? Is that, yes. how, you ate? Is that how they pr processed well, them? Well, in they fact, were... I... Uh, uh, and a lady interviewed me a while ago, well, I know about the sardine industry, and I said they used to call us herring chokers. Herring <laughs> That was a nickname the sardine and the women had, because it was the way they processed the sardine. Years ago, they were pre-cooked. They were put on what we call flakes, on flat wire things, and put in what we call racks, slid in, and they were put in steam boxes, and, and steam cooked. And then after they were steam cooked, they were taken to a dry it to oh, dry the excess moisture off. And then they were brought to the packers to put in the cans. Well, where they were steam cooked, the fish were soft. And the smaller fish, you didn't have to have uh, scissors to cut them. Uh, the smaller fish, anywhere from, from five, six, eight, or smaller fish, you didn't have to cut them. You could take your thumb and forefinger and pinch the heads off. Oh, we were choking them. <laughs> so that's how we got the nickname Aaron Chokers. 
Oh, and then, great. of course, in later years, in the late, I guess, 1950s, that's when they changed the process and started packing them raw, coming right in and packing them. And then we had to have very sharp scissors to cut the heads and tails off. And we also had to bandage our fingers well, because we could miss the fish and cut a finger. Absolutely. So with the ounce of prevention, wrapping our fingers up. Yes. When they but over